Hi guys, and welcome to the third episode of Ultimate Kite Loop series. To finish the Halo Loop topic, I'd like to answer the question I often get from my subscribers. If I want to soften a landing, which kind of Halo Loop should I use? A down loop or a normal kite loop? In general, both types of loop work the same and generate the same amount of power. The only thing that matters is where your kite loop is happening. For example, if you keep the kite far behind 12 on landing and you initiate a kite loop, pulling the kite further backwards, your loop will happen on the side from you and it will pull you sideways more than upwards. As a result, you will have quite a hard landing. However, if you go for a down loop now, the kite will spin right above your head, providing you with more vertical support. People tend to hold the kite behind 12 in the air, so in most cases, a down loop will help to soften the landing better. Or you can try to steer the kite to the front sharply and then loop it back to get a nice overhead kite loop. After you played with heli loops and feel like moving on to powered kite loops, I recommend you, try to guess, yes, to play with low powered loops more. It is a serious mistake to go for a powered loop not having a heli loop feeling in your muscle memory. A real good method to see if you have a proper heli loop instinct developed is to try a back row kite loop. You will not have a chance to concentrate on the loop for 100% because your mind will have to process a back roll at the same time and therefore you'll check if your kite loop skill has enough muscle memory backup. Just a couple of suggestions on that. Pick a light wind day. Make sure that one, one and a half meter jump is the maximum height you can get. Use a transition jump to practice. I recommend to separate the back roll from the kite loop. After you've lifted up from the water and have almost completed a back roll, having your trace on the water already inside, pull the bar for a kite loop to ride away in the opposite direction. Waiting gives you a guarantee that you'll have a late kite loop with less power. For your first tries, be sure to be really underpowered. It is still possible that you mix up during the trick and the crash can be hard in stronger winds. I suppose you will close the video now if I talk about heli loops more, so I'll proceed directly to power loops. You pull the bar earlier to drive the kite through the center of the wind window. It draws a wide arc, therefore providing you with a strong horizontal pull. Since the kite travels so low, it will need more time to climb back up to catch you on landing, until then you'll be dropping down fast. This free fall phase, together with horizontal speed, is the reason for injuries and fear of the powered kite loop. You have to go at least about 7 meters up to give your kite enough time to climb back to 12 after a big radius loop. It makes a normal gradual progression almost impossible with this trick. Because if you try to do a powered loop carefully, you will likely find yourself in the danger zone, where you are still not high enough for your kite to complete the loop but at the same time high enough to hurt yourself bad on landing. Ok, so how do you bypass that? You have probably noticed another safe zone which lies below 1.5 meter height level. The kite will have no chance to catch you if you jump inside of this range, but the low height itself will provide you a safe landing. This is where we're gonna be mastering all the basic powered loop skills and later we'll just transfer them into that higher safe corridor to go for a real mega loop. For this exercise, let's call it a baby mega loop. Choose a day when you feel underpowered. Begin with a transition jump. In this case, you'll have the board pointing downwind for landing right after the takeoff. Now, the most important. Be absolutely sure to stay within the range from half meter to 1.5 meters of height when you jump. Better if it would not be possible at all to go higher in your wind conditions. 
If right after the liftoff you feel that you're about to go higher, abort the loop and land normally. During your jump you initiate the kite loop in one solid motion, which is evolving from pulling the bar in for takeoff. You will drop down after the kite starts to climb back to 12 and will have no chance to be caught by the kite, but low height will guarantee you a safe landing. Despite the first impression, this baby mega loop gives you the same feelings as a real one. They are kite behavior, the feeling of a horizontal pull and high speed on landing. With some experience, work on evolving your baby mega loop a bit. Try getting closer to the top of that safe height range until the landing gets really hard. Together with transition loops, try straight baby mega loops as well. Play with it really a lot. Before switching to higher safe range, pay attention to your equipment. Your lines must be absolutely ok, no cuts or damages like this. Most of lines will get stretched a lot while looping, so I prefer reinforced lines for that. Tighten your harness before the session as much as you can. Then exhale and tighten more. Rips injuries due to losing harness on hard landings is the most common accident with kite loops. Using an impact vest is also a good idea. It is not so expensive at all, but will take care of your ribs. Now we'll follow the plan and bring the powered loop jump higher, avoiding the danger zone and create some space for the soft landing. In general, all the same as with the baby mega loop. Just follow the checklist. Height is crucial here. Be absolutely sure to have a stable jump of at least 7 meters in your wind conditions. Use a height tracker, at least borrow it, just to know how this height feels like. Or analyze your video to be sure that you can reach that height. It is very important. Timing of initiating the loop is based only on your feeling of reaching the apex of the jump. Just as the upward acceleration starts to disappear, crank the bar to loop the kite right before the top of the jump. Don't use the kite position as a reference, like OK, the kite is now at 11 o'clock, I loop it. No, it doesn't work here. Kite speed and position may vary from jump to jump. Sharp upwind course and line tension will guarantee that the kite will complete the loop faster and catch you on landing. You'll be pulled hard towards the kite during the loop and it will decrease the line's tension by the moment when the kite starts climbing back up. Less line's tension you have on takeoff, more bungee effect you'll have in the air. You'll have a late kite recovery and more dangerous landing. So, have some line's tension reserved from the beginning. Mark your sharpest upwind course and go for a powered loop only when you are able to keep it. That's how your trace on the water should look like. The course is getting sharper as you're going through the pre-jump procedure and approaching the liftoff point. Check out my learning to fly series. It is now complete with two episodes, a lot of info and exercises on both line tension and jumping high topics. Finally, the confidence. Be absolutely sure to have a feeling of a strong, solid pull of the kite in the beginning of a jump, able to bring you 7 meters up and above. If you have any doubts on takeoff, abort the loop and land normally. Your bravery means nothing when it comes to mega loops, at least nothing in terms of a safe landing. Your basic jumping skills are much more important. Your ability to have 5-7 meters or higher jumps out of 5 attempts will guarantee you a breathtaking but still safe powered loop. For your first tries you wanna crank the bar as hard as you can to make the kite complete the loop faster. It makes sense to reposition your palm along the bar to have a better leverage. Be sure to steer the kite during the loop until the leading edge is pointing straight upwind. 
under or over rotating the kite will make the recovery to 12 process longer. As you fall down, you might try to push the bar away to make the kite recover faster. Right before the moment of landing, you pull it in again and steer the kite to any side, either forward to dive the kite down and ride away normally or backwards for a second kite loop right before touchdown or already on the surface. Just don't leave it in neutral position behind your back where it will likely stall and fall down as you hit the surface on landing. As you can see, powered loop itself isn't something technically difficult. Some particular jump techniques and pre-exercises are more important here. Don't forget to have a short skill refreshment on every training session before trying a high altitude powered loop. Several heli loops, some jumps to be sure you can boost above 7 meters, several low baby mega loops, and you are good to try. Alright, I'm pretty sure that all of you will make it to the next video, where we're gonna be trying different kites and lines setups for looping and answering your questions. So don't forget to post them in the comments below and see you in the next episode. <music>